I've studied art history across all Asian cultures. For me, Buddhism is the common thread that ties all of these different cultures together. We have an excellent collection of Chinese and Korean Buddhist bronzes. They range from around the 4th, 5th century up through the Tang Dynasty, which is around the 10th century. And all of these have been collected by Japanese collectors. Some of the earliest Buddhist bronzes in China were brought by monks and traders along the Silk Road from India and Central Asia into China. So they were small, easily portable. They could be slipped into a pocket or saddlebag and set up on a small private shrine for worship. This amazing bronze is probably one of the earliest depictions of Buddha in China. It dates from the fourth century. There's a direct correlation between this and Indian art that's being made in the second and third centuries in North India and the ancient region of Gandhara, which is today Pakistan and Afghanistan. The drapery here is from Gandhara, and that region was actually influenced by Greco-Roman sculpture. So you have these voluminous folds of drapery that are descended from Greek sculpture from when Alexander the Great invaded Pakistan and Afghanistan. There are lions here on the base, which is a symbol of royalty in India, but there are no lions in China. It shows the Chinese bronze casters trying to work not from what they knew in their lives, but just referencing Indian bronzes. I particularly like this piece because it shows how quickly Buddhism became such an important religion in China. It dates from just a few centuries after this piece, but you can see there's already a huge difference in style. This flaming mandorla behind the Buddha is an Indian prototype, but we've lost the sort of Indian drapery. It's been replaced by these very bold geometric folds of drapery. The figure itself has lost the sort of musculature that you would think of when you think of Greek sculpture. It's definitely an idealized representation of Buddha rather than a more naturalistic one. The tiny inscription on the base says, the fifth year of the Zhenguang reign, the twelfth month, made by Ming Pan's wife, praying for the safety of the entire family. This piece offers us this window into the private life of people that lived 1,500 years ago. Eventually, Buddhism reached the shores of Japan. Japanese collectors are some of the most prominent and sophisticated collectors of Chinese Buddhist art. This piece shows the typical Japanese appreciation for small, beautiful objects. They have this custom box with the fabric lining and the custom-made base. This piece is a Tang gilt bronze bodhisattva. We're not sure when it made its way to Japan, but when it did arrive, it was obviously appreciated as an ancient Chinese antiquity. Despite its small size, it's incredibly crisply cast, and you can see all the fine details of the jewelry, the crown, the lotus bottle that is holding the willow branch. The gilding is also remarkably intact for something that's over a thousand years old. Something that all of these Buddhas have in common is that they're small, beautiful objects that at one time would have been worshipped. Each culture interpreted the religion in their own way. And so the study of Buddhist art is in itself a study of the history of Asian art.